Welcome to section 3. Managing your project using GitLab tools. Getting grips with issues and issue boards. In this video, we'll take a look at how to create and edit issues, and how to create and edit boards, and a lot more. Let's open one of our projects. Let's go to the issues section. Currently, we don't have any issues, so let's create one. We'll need to write a title. Also, good practice is to get really long, long descriptions that are descriptive and are easy to follow. Other options when we create issues are also to assign it, to set the milestone, to label it, to set weight, and to set due date. Let's leave this for now and just create the issue. Once the issue is created, we are redirected to the issue detail page. We can see what state the issue is currently in. We can close issue. We can create new issue. And we can see our title and our issue description. On the right side, we can edit issue parameters, like set the signee, set milestone, see the estimate and time spent, setting due date, setting labels, setting weight, confidentiality, and we can lock issue. Issues have a discussion part, so we can write a comment to this issue. We have two options. We can add a general comment to this. We have two options. We can add a general comment to the issue, or we can start a new discussion, like a suggestion and question. You can see that the comment is just a regular comment. Let's start a discussion on our suggestion. You will see that discussions also have separate replies. We can collapse replies so they don't take much space, but you can see how this is the part of a suggestion. But you can see that our new comments are part of this suggestion. But you can see that new comment is part of suggestion. We can also add a reaction to our comments. We can edit the comment. If we edit a comment, it will be clearly noted. We can delete it or copy the link to this comment. We can also vote up or vote down the issue itself. We have some options what will be shown in this issue. We can show all activity, only comments, or only history. Let's assign this issue. Let's also set the issue due date. Now let's take a look at the labels. Labels will allow us to group the project in some way. We don't have any labels yet, so let's go to Manage Project Labels. 
let's generate default set of labels. Great, GitLab did all the work for us. So we got bug label, confirmed label, critical label, discussion, documentation enhancement, suggestion, and support label. We can also add our own labels. If we hit a new label button, we can set the label title, label description, and we can choose a label color. We can also subscribe to the label. So we will get notification when this label is used. Let's go back to our project. We can also access our issues from the top menu. So this will list all the issues that are assigned to us. Let's put some labels to the issue. Now we have many labels to choose from. Let's set this as a bug, as a confirmed bug, and as a critical bug. You will see that we can use multiple labels. We can also set weight to our project. Weight represents how hard this issue to resolve. We can also set confidentiality. These allow us to hide issues from some team members. And finally, we can also log the issue. If we log the issue, only members of the project will be able to comment. We can also move our issue between our projects. Let's go to boards. There is a default board already created by GitLab. It's called Development Board. Every board has open and closed section, but anything in between is created as a list. Let's follow a suggestion and add the default list to do and doing. When we have our board set up, we can use it and move issue between the columns. So, let's move our first issue to to-do list. Let's create another issue. Let's label this issue as a support issue. Let's set due date to the end of this week and submit it. Let's create a board that will only hold our support issues. Let's name our board support, expand our board scope, and set labels to support. Now we have a separate board that only holds issues that are tagged as support. In our development board, we also have this issue. So, let's edit this board to only hold issues that are tagged for development. So, development, for example, bug, enhancement, and that's it.
So let's set bug as a label. So this board will only hold issues that has a bug tag. Let's create another board that will hold all of our issues. So now we have three boards. One that holds all of our issues. One that's for development. And one that's for support. Let's set to-do list for your support. In this video, we took a look at how can we create issues and boards.